All right, now I want to go into some of the language that kind of throws people off. In Matthew chapter 24, let's back up to verse number 14. He says, the gospel will be preached unto all the world, then the end will come. Remember, we're talking about the end of the temple. Verse 15, they will see the desolation standing in the holy place. Those are the armies that will be surrounding the city of Jerusalem. Now jump down to verse number 24, false Christ will arise. And look at verse 27. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes out of the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse number 29, the immediate out of those days will be tribulation. Look at verse 30, and the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and the tribes of the earth will mourn. And back up and look at verse number 29. After the tribulation, notice it says, and the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give his light, stars will fall from heaven, the powers of heaven will be shaken. Okay, look at verse number 31. He was send his angels with the sound of a trumpet. Okay, and they were gathered together his elect. So we see the, the stars falling out of heaven, the earth shaking and moving, the heavens moved out of their place, and the, the sound of a trumpet. And people say, well, those things have not happened yet because we still see the earth and the heavens around us. People are focused on the material. They're focused on the, uh, uh, the, the, the dirt and the stars and the moon. But what you have to understand is that to the Jews, they understood uh, language differently from you and I. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Turn to Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah chapter 13 is a prophecy against the city of Babylon. Now, Babylon was destroyed back around 539 BC. It's already been destroyed. It's in the past. Okay, that's very important. It's in the past. But in Isaiah 13, when Isaiah prophesied about the destruction of Babylon, he used the same language that Jesus used in Matthew 24. And let me show you what I mean by that. Look at Isaiah 13, verse 1. The burden against Babylon. Okay? It's a burden against Babylon. Now, what was this burden? Look at verse number 4. Look at the last sentence in verse number 4. The Lord of hosts is mustering an army for battle. Okay, they're going to come from a far country, from the end of heaven. Notice, God says, I am mustering an army for battle against Babylon, and they're going to come from a far country. And then he said, they're going to come from the end of heaven. Now, who is this army? Jump down and look at verse 17. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them. Now, it is a historical fact that the Medes and the Persians destroyed the city of Babylon. Yet when God talks about the Medes attacking Babylon, he says the Medes were going to come from the end of heaven. He's talking about humans coming from the end of heaven. And notice what he says what is going to happen when the Medes attack Babylon. Look at verse number six. It's called the day of the Lord. It says destruction from the Almighty. Look at verse eight. The day of the Lord is going to come cruel with both wrath and fierce anger. Okay, look at verse 10. And the stars of heaven and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be darkened and the moon will, will not cause his light to shine. Notice the same language. Look at verse 11. I will punish the world for its evil. You see that? He is talking to Babylon. The city of Babylon, he says the stars and the heavens and all the lights, the sun and moon are going to stop shining and I'm going to punish the world. The word world here is not used for creation. It's not used for the dirt the, the uh, uh, and the, uh, uh, the physical things around. The word world is a term that's used to describe the city of Babylon. Babylon was its own world. And, and, and Isaiah said, God is going to punish the world. The world of who? The world of Babylon. Okay. Look at verse 13. And I will shake the heavens, the earth. Notice the earth will be moved out of her place in the wrath of the Lord. The heavens are going to be shaken. The earth is going to be moved out of its place. Now, this happened many years ago, over 2,000 years ago when God did this. Yet look around. The earth is still here. The heavens are still here. This is figurative language that God uses to describe the destruction of Babylon. Now go back to Matthew 24. 
In Matthew 24, Jesus used the same language to describe the destruction of Jerusalem. When those armies surrounded Jerusalem, the heavens were going to shake. The stars would not give their sign. The trumpet would sound and all those things. That's figurative language that the Jews were used to to describe destruction that was impending. This figurative language is used to describe God's impending judgment upon the city of Jerusalem, upon the temple. The next video, I'm going to show you in what generation these things are supposed to happen. What's supposed to happen in their generation or our generation, okay?